I'm out of shape. Need to quit smoking. Fuck, man. I mean, I gotta run, but when it comes to pads, man, I get my fucking ass kicked all the time. Nobody can hold pads for me back home except for Walker. Jay Z, maybe, and Derek, Nick. Anyway, bag work.
As you can see, is uh, nobody here. First one. It's like I got here like 7:15. You would think people would come a little bit early. These people will start showing up, and then over time, high season, man, it's gonna end. It's gonna just explode here and everywhere, really. But you know, between here and Fitness Street, these are the two big dogs in Phuket, I think. And Fitness Street is is. This is gonna compete with Fitness Street eventually. I'll tell you, this is the whole, the whole area. I'll tell you why, because there's like three or four Muay Thai gyms like right, right around the corner. You got, I live right next to one called Revolution Muay Thai. There's another one called Su Thai Muay Thai, which is supposed to be like really badass. Like their fighters are like the, like the legit Thai fight, like the really, really good ones. I, so I'm excited to check that out. And then there's another one on the main road, but I forget what it is and it's like, like five or six miles away but this is going to compete with fitness street i think because eventually eventually by the time you have about two or three more little muay thai gyms pop up around here then it'll it'll compete um fitness street just has a lot of convenience i mean you got i mean if you want me to rattle off the names of the gyms you got i'm trying to do it in order of the, of the street so you got like Tiger, Tiger Muay Thai, then you got Dragon Muay Thai, then you got um, Phuket Singha, no, Singha Muay Thai, Phuket, something like that. And then it's Phuket Top Team. And then you got another one called like Uno, Uno, Uno Val, Viao. And then you also have Ratachai Muay Thai, which is on an adjacent block, and then also closer to where the beach club used to be, Tiger Beach Club, you have Phuket Fight Club, and then you also have Eagle Muay Thai. So there's like fucking 12 gyms right within a one mile vicinity, two mile vicinity. Here there's only like three or four that I know of. Um, but that's gonna change. That's gonna change. Like, I even I was. I was in one of the, uh, I went to go with what I thought was a weed shop. I'm so stupid. It was like right in front of the fucking gym. And I'm like, oh, this is the weed shop? They're like, no, this is a protein shake store. I'm like, I'm like oh, shit, my bad. And then um, I just got to talking to them. And then they were like, yeah, this guy right here, he's in the, uh, he's in 1FC. I'm like, oh, yeah? I'm like, I didn't recognize him. But I'm like, oh, no doubt. I'm like, what's, what's your name? I'm like, first he told me his name was Felipe. It was, basically, it was Felipe Lobo. Uh, if you want to look him up on 1FC, but I mean, uh, internet, whatever. 
But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm running into fighters here all the time. I saw Darren Till, I see Darren Till like 10 fucking times already. I just don't run up to him and get pictures. I feel like, I feel like I'm gonna make it a point today. I'm gonna try. I'm just gonna be like, just so I can collect a bunch of pictures and kind of, I wanted to showcase to my boss, honestly. He, he'd be, he would appreciate it a lot more. And uh, maybe another coworker that I work with, my buddy Adam. You know, these guys love this sport. And I feel like if they were exposed to this, they would, their life would change. So Adam, if you're ever watching this, man, don't suffocate yourself. Come to, uh, come to a place like this, even for jujitsu. You could get everything you want out of this country, even in jujitsu standards, you know? There's a lot of Brazilians out here and a lot of Brazilian black belts. I mean, I don't, I mean, I'm not a jiu-jitsu guy. I used to be, but now I'm a stand-up guy. But anyways, yeah. You gotta, gotta, gotta experience as much as you can, you know? So, I'm trying to, I'm starting to fall back in love with the sport. And uh, I think I'm getting confident enough to maybe fight again. Because I kind of see how the fight game goes here a little bit and... It'll probably be an easier, easier fight than I think, at least in the beginning, until I maybe have a couple wins under my belt here, and then the promoters know me, and then they like give me harder fights and stuff. But anyway, I want to challenge myself, but I want to also feel good. Like my back is just always constantly tight, my shoulder is an issue. So let me see if I get that fixed. Let me see if I get my kicks fixed up, and if I could quit smoking and quit drinking, then it's game time. I already quit smoking for a day and drinking for a day. So I'm about one day in on both. So we'll see how it goes. But anyways, training starts I don't know, like 40 minutes. But I'm just going to start moving around because uh, I'm getting bored. You know, I'm always coming back to this noodle soup. I love to test it at different places. This is much of a thinner noodle you can see. Okay. This one's 80 baht and uh, looks good. It's got some stir fried mushrooms. Need my brain power back. And then I like my uh, go to uh, garlic and pepper chicken. You know? It's a good mixture of uh, not too much carbs <coughs> and <coughs> I just enjoy it, you know. I, I'm having to eat carbs with the noodles because it's been almost, it's impossible to enjoy Thai food without having some. You know what I mean? That's how I feel. Gotta have some. I still haven't even had any fried rice yet in three weeks. Would you believe that? Not a single ounce of fried rice. I've had white rice, but not fried. But anyway, I'm gonna eat this meal, enjoy it. And I don't think you wanna watch me eat, but maybe for a minute. Coaches and the crews like me. One thing that happened today during training was like move sparring. And during sparring, I was with a bigger guy and I was tired. I was kind of nauseous already at this point. So I didn't really feel like being that active. But I would just walk the guy down and just block everything. Just <laughs> kind of looked like I didn't care. And then hit him with clean shots whenever I kind of wanted to. And then at the end of the round, or two rounds, the crew was like, you know, he's beating, he told the other guy that I'm winning, even though he's throwing more punches and kicks because he was on the back foot. He was on the back, like, you know, backing away, back throw, punch, kick, and then back away. And I tell people, I'm like, listen, you can't do that here. You can, but... I really appreciate 
they really appreciate that, that you, when you walk forward and you show no fear. And you basically have good defense, good shell, because it's more of a sport of like, who's got the bigger balls, who can take the most punishment and give the most punishment and not look like they don't care about it. Like that's, that's how it is. And honestly, now that like I'm getting older, I used to be afraid to fight a Thai, for example. I mean, they're scary, don't, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, they're respectful about it, you know? And they can have fun, and it's like, it's like a game. And then if you can understand how to play the game, and understand the, like, the unwritten rules of the game, and then it changes. Yeah, that's my food for thought about being in the gym. So when it comes to Muay Thai and the crews, they like a, they like a fighter to come forward. You know, block, block, block. They like a lot of kicks too, but they like just as much a forward coming, a uh, forward moving fighter who can kick heavy. No, I love it. But I put on a display today a little bit, a little bit on a heavy bag. I work with the head trainer. I can tell he likes working with me, but I just, I have no grip. I'm slipping all over these mats. And it becomes a problem when I have to throw kicks. Because I can't stand. Oh no, the rain, I'm gonna move. That's my insight. So, I'm at uh, Revolution Muay Thai. My hotel is right, uh, my apartment rather, is right behind this gym. Oh man, I can't go. Two minutes without getting my socks wet. That's why you're wearing sneakers. But uh, anyways, I don't want to be disrespectful and film them too much while they're training because guys got fights coming up and uh, it's not a good look. They might think like I'm spying or some shit. But yeah, I'm gonna just watch. I'm gonna watch them hit pads. I kind of want to see where the trainers are at. And then uh, yeah, I mean I'm like literally it's my backyard so. I got, I'm stupid if I don't come to try it out at least for a day. So, yeah, we're gonna take take a peek see. And uh, maybe I'll I'll get a little bit on camera. I'll ask if I could film for like 30 seconds. And see if they're cool with it, but other than that, let's watch. This is the worst Bloody Mary I've ever had in my life. I don't know what they're using for tomato juice, but it's fucking terrible. So much so, I had to order a glass of wine just to clean my palate. And I can't drink too much wine because I'll drink it too fast and I'll get too drunk and then I'll have a serious headache tomorrow. So I was forced, oh by the way, by the way back to this, they had to drive. <laughs> There's no bar here. There's no bar here. So they had to drive my Bloody Mary here on a motorbike from the restaurant, from the other half of the restaurant down the road. And then he brought it in a cup. I saw him walk up with it in a cup and then she presented it to me in this. So I just, I don't know, that's, that to me that's hilarious. Oh, by the way, it's raining again. What a surprise. What a surprise. It's raining. But um, I'm supposed to be meeting Ziggy and his, his lady. I have a feeling they're not going to make it. And they probably won't even text me and tell me that they're not going to make it. So I'm going to give him until a one hour waiting time. We'll see if he shows up. So let's just take a little walk to the rain. Rain. I swear, if you guys look up right now, I mean, by the time you guys see these videos posted on YouTube, you won't. Oh man, my bike is just getting shit on. Oh, I wonder if I can move it. Let me move this real quick. Oh, fuck me, that just messed me up. 
I'm not gonna work. Well, anyways, now I'm wet. Now I'm soaking wet. So, um, but yeah, she's been treating me good, I'll tell you. Uh, I had a few close calls. I, I had one really, really close call while driving. And um, other than that, I've been all right. Yeah, I've gotten really used to the bigger 155 and I kind of enjoy it. It's much more stable. You know, it, felt, it felt stiff and rigid at first, but it's, it's really okay. I really don't mind the 155 at all. But, um, yeah, I try. man, on my back is so wet now. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, the rain doesn't stop. It, by the time you guys see these videos posted on YouTube, um, if you like look back to how much rain has hit Phuket in the last four days, like there's pictures of Phuket Old Town completely flooded out. There's pictures of markets completely flooded out. I don't know. I couldn't tell you the name of the markets. Obviously, the, the ones that they're setting up probably aren't setting up, but maybe they are. I don't know. I, I, I'm not even... I don't want to drive to find out. That's how bad the rain has been for four days. Uh, to the point where, like, I feel like it's almost dangerous. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I don't know this land well enough. But, like, when I say dangerous, I mean, like, like... There's just so much water. I'm worried more of like a landslide or like something happening on like a mountainside where like it's just so waterlogged. It's been nonstop for four days. I feel like this should almost be on like international news how much rain Thailand is getting. At least okay. I've never seen so much rain in my life. And I know it's rainy season, but for the th two or three weeks I've already been here, uh, these last four days don't compare to the last three weeks. And um, it's, I guess it's part of the experience. Like, I'll never forget some of the things I've seen from this rain. Like floods, like waterfalls coming out of people's homes and stuff like that. Like right through their like living rooms and motorcycles in the river. And I don't know why I didn't film all this stuff because I'm a stupid idiot and I didn't carry my GoPro with me at the time. But now I'm going to make it a point to carry my GoPro everywhere because I'm done using my, my camera, my, my video camera on my phone to make videos i'm done with, i'm done with it it's 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 gonna be all gopro from here on out but on my prior early videos you're gonna see like i had no choice because now i have this bag and now in this bag i can carry this gopro with this tripod and that's all i really need i don't even need the chest piece but I'll use the chess piece when I'm using it for like uh, maybe a market or maybe like a, a, a bike ride. But yeah, I'm gonna enjoy some um, some singha, some pork satay, and then uh, on to the next. See what kind of mischief we can get into tonight, huh? So Tony was just waving everybody over. I was like, yo, what's going on? I thought he wanted to show me something cool, but. I'm gonna show you what he wanted to show me. Not this, not this, but this over here. Man, this is what this rain is doing. Check this out. His fucking roof came down. His roof came down, man. Oh my god. It's, it's no good. Not good. Oh, hey. look at the mess. Look at the mess on the floor. It's just... look. look, this is not supposed to... Bro, I feel like I need to film this clouds right here. This is the first let up of the rain Phuket has seen in fucking four days, five days. Patong, the, the road going to Patong. The road going to Patong has collapsed. There has been a fucking landslide or something. Something happened over there and it's not good. 
And I would drive over there, but I've been drinking and I'm a jabroni. So not today, another day. But look at the sky, man. This is just gray, but at the same time, it's so peaceful, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh man, I'm, I'm so happy to see some, some dry, dry skies. Even though big rain is still on the way, it looked like maybe that way, maybe that way, but come on. <sighs> Anything. Just touch it, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Get that. But it's okay, even if it goes black. No problem. Bon. Say hello. Hello. Confirm. Yes. Say hello. Hello. Dear. Hello. Cheers. Hey, cheers. Hey. Kunja. Say hello. Hello. Cheers. Kuntam. Say hello. Kuntam. Cheers. Uh -huh. So here we're drinking some wine today. Figure it's gonna save me money because I end up spending fucking five thousand, six thousand baht every time I come here. So now we're changing. We're changing gears. And we're going to 7-Eleven, we're just buying bottles of wine because it's going to be cheaper. And everybody drink. So, yeah? Uh, hello, it's my mom. Uh. I'm just going to wait for her to take a shower and go back to the lion bar and cool out. But I want to show you this little precious thing. I mean, come on. How can you not like the kittens? I mean, the kittens are 
fucking amazing here in Thailand. I love them. What are you doing? <laughs> what you doing? What you doing, girl? Choke the. Choke the. Good luck. Good luck. And what you doing? No, oh, no, she she's not interested. What you doing, little girl? Huh? You like a little a little tiger, huh? A little tiger. Mmm. Gotta love the Thai kittens, man. I swear. They're so abundant. They're everywhere. And they're, they're absolutely the most friendly animals in the world. And it's hard to explain. You know, most kittens have like blue eyes too. This cat's got brown eyes. Straight brown. I don't know why she got the brown eyes. Maybe it's just a a, a a Thai thing, I don't know. But what you doing, huh? What you doing?